The future you want is the future you make. I, I thought a lot about this title, and I decided that I would revise it slightly, and this would be about improving population and community health. And although it's true the future you want is the future you make, I think it's, the title probably should be the future that you got was the future that someone else made and not very well. Well, that's the whole idea, improving the nation's health. The future you want is the future you make, but I still believe that the uh, title of this talk might also equally be the future that you got is the future someone else made, and that future was not very well made at all. So I've got a couple of points um, that I want to make. There's a modern parable about the physician and the epidemiologist that really kind of capsulates all of this. And I won't go into great detail on that parable, but it goes something like this. A physician and an epidemiologist are walking down a river which goes over a waterfall, and they start seeing all kinds of people floating down that river toward the waterfall. The physician says, you've got to come in and you've got to help me pull them out. The epidemiologist says, I'm going upstream to tr find out why they're falling in. And I'll get back to that in a minute, but the point is it's about prevention. A couple things about health. Health determinants versus health spending. 90% of the money we spend is on health care access, and that accounts for only 6% of what makes for health. Totally misaligned. If you did that in front of our good friend uh, uh, Donald Trump, he would say, you're fired. Secondly, longevity is worse in this state and in, in this country. And uh, we see that um, countries that spend far less on health care um, actually have results that are better or as good as what we have. And this is my uh, favorite example of that. So this shows the United States, which spends more money on health care than any country in the world by a long shot, and Cuba there on your left. And the motto of this slide is, expect less, pay more, if you live in the United States. Longevity is the same. The third issue, misaligned and rising health care costs are driving out investments in the other things that make sense. We see that at the state level. Health care goes up, investment in higher ed goes down, and in all those other things that make for a good life. So how do we approach such a wicked challenge? Spanky is going to help us with that idea. <laughs> um, there's a variety of different ways. I think we could call this the issue of public health prevention, health promotion, public policy, and public health. And that's what that modern parable was about. You go upstream. So going upstream to fix these things for us in our world today is about policy that has vision and direction and that aligns with, our, with investments in what really creates health. Equity, critical. Health in all policies. And we are doing some of that in Minnesota even today. Healthy Minnesota 2020 talks about a triple aim for public health. Early childhood, strengthening communities, and assuring opportunities to be healthy are there for everyone. Health systems have come together. Silos to Circles is sponsored by Stratus Health, and all the major health systems are involved in it. And they are talking about how can they work collaboratively to improve population health. So the future you want is the future that you make, and as Gandhi told us, the future depends on what you do today, what we do in the present. For us to really make a difference is really going to involve public policy. It's about decisions. You must choose, but choose wisely, because if you choose poorly, it has some major ramifications that are not terribly pleasant. Thank you very much.